All right, welcome everyone. Chris Petrie here. Thanks so much for coming by. We're just having a great time. This is an Extreme Beginner Series video. So what are you gonna expect in this video? You're gonna expect that you're gonna get the really, really important knowledge that you're gonna need as a watercolor artist to get a beautiful flower painting like this completed. And uh, it's a smaller composition, which I always suggest if you're just starting out in watercolor, don't worry about painting those really large paintings like 18 by 24s. Those are tough. Um, you can do it and you can practice it too, but always remember if you can focus your energy on smaller compositions like this first, that's gonna give you a key advantage because you're gonna kind of have a little time, uh, a little easier time handling uh, the painting process if you're working in a little bit of a smaller format. Um, but again, if you wanna work in a larger format, that's fine too. Uh, you're the artist, you make your decisions, but a lot of the great artists over time um, have always worked in small um, formats and then they do their larger paintings more, um, let's say, not as, as much. So they're working in smaller compositions to get all of their ideas worked out, their colors, their compositions worked out. And then when they have maybe five or six of these smaller compositions like this, then they'll take all those four or five smaller paintings and then take a large sheet of paper and then say, all right, I'm going to take the best of what I've learned out of those smaller paintings and put it onto a larger sheet of paper. So that's really, or canvas. So that's kind of how I look at it too. I think there's a lot of um, value in that of trying to practice smaller compositions first, but we're gonna learn in this video how to mix your colors first, look at your subject matter, your photograph, um, your painting that you might have, um, something from a book. Maybe you've picked, purchased my book and you wanna paint one of my paintings out of my book. You'll say, all right, what, what am I seeing there? What colors am I seeing? You figure out, for the most part, close as, as you can get it. What colors do I see in that? We're gonna use this as our photograph to work from to get this. You put those colors out on your palette first. You take your time for 10 minutes and purple, blue, reds, pinks, over here, greens, up here, greens. Okay, I'm seeing some oranges and yellows here. You get those all onto your palette, then you're all set. You have your colors laid out before you start painting. And then you start your drawing you, you know, you get your pencil drawing in first. That's the first thing. Then you get your colors mixed. And then you go in and you start doing the painting. So we're going to show you the whole process here as we go. Um, and I think uh, the more you follow my channel and you work along with me, you'll learn all these methods and techniques in watercolor. They'll stick with you. You'll get better and better at watercolor. I guarantee that you will. Um, but you just have to... Remember that it doesn't happen overnight. You gotta just keep working at it a little bit at a time. And if you're putting in a little bit of effort every weekend, or if you can muster some time during the week too as well, maybe in the evening time or whenever's a good time for your um, schedule, you can work in a little bit of practice time during the week. But if you're sticking with us here uh, each week uh, on all of my videos, and even if you're not painting along, you can just watch along the vi on the video. You'll learn a lot just by listening and, and watching what we're doing here. So let's get started uh, in just a second here. And um, we'll start the process, of course, first by doing a light pencil sketch. And then after that, a contour drawing. And then as we get into the video a little more, we'll do the painting. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so we're getting started now. We just saw the, the finished painting. And I just, you know, went over a quick little review of what's going to be in the video, in this tutorial. So let's get started. Um, first thing I always mention is, you know, try to have a pre-cut mat. Have multiple sizes of these, you know, from the small ones like this up to the larger ones. This way, whenever you're creating a painting or a composition, even if you're just practicing, try to put it down on your paper before you tape tape around your uh, watercolor paper. It's always good to tape down your watercolor paper with some uh, good um, artist tape or uh, painter's tape you can get in the big box stores like Home Depot and Lowe's and uh, your hardware stores and Blicks and Joann's or your local art stores that you might have, get painter's tape and try to tape out your borders around your watercolor paper. And the reason I say that is when you're done painting, you can just lift off your tape and you have a beautiful crisp white border around your painting. And that it looks so much better that way. Then you can take this and um, trim around it with a, a pair of scissors and then pin it up on your wall or tape it up on your wall. And, uh, you know, wherever you want to on your refrigerator and you just, you know, when you're, when your small compositions like, you know, like this come out good, you, you put them up on the wall, be, be proud of your successes. Um, yeah, you're going to have a lot of clunker paintings like I do. We all do them where you just have paintings. They don't turn out good. You know, you just, you had a problem when you were painting and some, you know, something went wrong and you stopped in the middle of the painting and just 
put it to the side and you started a new one. That's the good thing to do. But still, keep working. You're always going and trying new paintings, new compositions. Work small. Do a lot of small, especially if you're just starting. You know, if you just started painting or you're just here for the first time, welcome. Thank you so much for coming by. Um, I always mention if you're brand new here and this is maybe only your first or second time here, please click the subscribe button below. This way you'll be contacted uh, each time you open up YouTube to, you know, you'll see that I've made a new video. That's all. This way you kind of keep a, a, a track of what we're doing here on my channel. I'm giving you all the best information I can on watercolor so your paintings get better and your compositions get better as you work and get, you know, better at watercolor. So again, you can have these pre-cut mats. You can purchase maybe one or two of them. Any kind of like art supply stores have them. Online you can buy them. Um, and they're basically, you put them down on your paper and you just sort of make some dots around your paper like this on four corners like that. And this way you kind of know, all right, wow, I taped out this paper and it looks perfect. I have plenty of extra room around the inside of this window of this mat. So we have a perfect tape border around this paper, watercolor paper we're using here. And I'm using Fabriano Studio watercolor paper. Great paper, not that expensive, and it's super high quality for the price. It's a great paper. Um, so, you know, if you're coming along in the watercolor medium and you want to have some great paper, again, I always say the Fabriano is great paper. Uh, let me see if I have a picture of it. And I tend to try to keep my notes with me in the studio here. This is what it looks like if you look online. Studio watercolor, Fabriano paper. This is great. It's not the top of the line Fabriano, but it's good, great for when you're just starting out in watercolor and you want really excellent paper. Because trust me, really good paper like this when you're starting out is important, but you don't necessarily have to have it right, right away. You might paint for like a half a year and then you start buying maybe this. Or if you have a little extra money in your budget, I would definitely get this if you can. The uh, Fabriano Studio watercolor because it's great paper. You know, you can even use it for like professional use to create paintings and put in galleries and things like that. That's how good it is. But um, it always helps you to have better watercolor paper when you're just beginning and st starting out in watercolor because um, it gives you more time to work and it's a little more forgiving than maybe some less expensive papers. So we'll get started here. I have just a regular office pencil here. It's an HB2 yellow office pencil or a school pencil. And what we'll do is we'll just, we're going to have a pink lily here. We're going to paint this and um, just a beautiful, simple composition. We're not going to spend an hour or two here. We're just going to, let's have a fun time doing a quick composition of this beautiful flower. So let's go and go in here. And we kind of noticed that the flower, I took this photograph from a picture online. And um, it's actually a, a watercolor uh, painting. I just found it online. I typed in uh, lilies watercolor um, paintings and I found this online and I took a picture on my TV screen and that's what I have is this you know just a simple watercolor and there's a bird in that too so that's really a pretty shore bird there and so let me we'll do this this is again so now we see this we're look, working from our photograph here on our phone and I say to myself this looks like the majority of the picture is the lily right in the almost you know more than half of the picture, three quarters of the picture. So three quarters of the picture here is the lily. And then over here is just some more quiet space. And then there's the bird here at the bottom. So this is really a, a great way to paint. Fill that paper up with lots of information and, and beautiful colors and washes. And that's what we're gonna do. So let's look here and say, let's do a really light sketch first. I'm just going to do a light, light, super light sketch. Barely visible. You might be able to see it. Maybe you're not going to see this. I'm not sure. And I make sure that I press down my tape just along the edge where the paper is. And then I do that. And then like this. And then like this. And then like that. Like this. And then over here like so. I'm just doing a really light, um, sketch like that. 
and you can see, and I'm going to go over this again with a darker pencil line. I just want to do it myself so I know, you know, that I'm doing a good job here before I start getting into some darker pencil lines. I want to make sure I, um, I do a good job here of uh, getting everything. All right, that looks good. And then the center of the flower is here. And then I'm just going to lightly sketch in my shorebird here. So my shorebird, I'm just going to look at the, uh, the the picture and say the bottom of the shorebird is just a touch above the bottom of the, the picture frame here. So if I went around the picture frame with a pencil line, so you can see here, I'll do that. I'll just make a nice pencil line like that, nice dark pencil line so you can see. Um, the shorebird here, it's the bottom of the shorebird is a little bit above the picture frame. And then it comes up like this. And then uh, we have the, the shorebird. Like that. Okay, and then the shorebird's legs are here, like that. So I'm hoping uh, this looks good, that you can kind of see. I'm sort of just getting things in the right spot. And the reason I go really light with my pencil, pencil sketch is you can always take a kneaded eraser like this, a nice kneaded eraser, and do a little bit of corrections and erase up a little bit of your super light pencil sketch to get things in just in the right spot. You might have drawn in your flower correctly, but you might have started and just started drawing your bird maybe too high in the picture. And you say, oh, I got to drop down my bird a little bit. I notice it's my shore bird's a little bit too high. I want to drop it down closer to the bottom of the, so you just do a little bit of, you know, racing. And then you bring your, your, uh, you know, you correct your drawing and bring your, your object here, your, um, our object here, which is our shore bird here. So that, that we drop that lower into the picture frame here. So, and um, all right, so now we have the light pencil sketch completed. And then what I'll do is um, I'm going to do in just a second, I will um, do a darker pencil line over this super light pencil sketch that I have here. Um, I know you can see my pencil sketch, my light pencil sketch pretty much, but not really a, a, a great deal. So that's why I'm going to go over a second time with my pencil and um, and I'll do that in just a second. Okay, so let me just uh, take a quick break and I'll come right back. All right, so we are getting started again here. We want to do the darker pencil line. So let's get that going here. So I'll start maybe here at the bottom and I'll just go around carefully. Okay, so I'm going to go in like this, and then I might go down here and just get the center of the flower a little bit there. And then this here petal over this way. And down here, and then there's the vase here. So we have a vase here. We're not going to make a big deal of the vase. Again, we're just trying to do a real kind of like close-up of just one beautiful flower here with an arrangement of um, other flowers in a watercolor painting. And so we we have this here and then this flower's petal is there. And then we have our shorebird here and we're just going to do our shorebird like this. He's a happy shorebird here. He's looking at the flowers and hopping around a little bit and then he's going to eventually just take flight and uh, zoom off somewhere else for the time being and maybe comes back. Who knows? And then we'll just have a couple other little bits of information with our pencil lines here and there. But really the, this is the the key uh, drawing that we need to get accomplished here. And you can kind of see how I just 
um, kind of did a contour drawing. We talk about contour drawing on my channel all the time. Contour drawing is nothing more than you're starting in one place, and and this is also starting out with a, a preliminary sketch like we did here. So we started out with that super light sketch, barely visible. It, I know it's hard to see on video sometimes, but what I have to do is I have to make sure I lightly, uh, up, I do the utmost light sketch just to make sure I'm kind of getting the concept of where everything has to go in my picture frame here, in my, uh, on my paper. And then once I'm looking at all this and then I'm transferring that super light on a light sketch, once it's good then and I can do a little bit of erasing and no one's going to know ever because it's just, you know, when you do light sketches, you can just erase really easy and, light, and there's no problem with that. And then you can correct a few lines here and there as you go. And then once it's really solid and you feel like, wow, yeah, I've got everything in the right place, then you can go over with our darker pencil line like we did. And that's exactly what we did here. So you, you notice that I did those two sketches, the light one first, and then the second one is the contour drawing. And contour drawing is really you're starting in one location on your drawing, and then you just start from there and you just go around through your painting. Generally, you like to just kind of stick to uh, close areas as you draw. So you might not want to just start and go around like a silhouette you might start in one area and then you kind of start working into the center of the painting and where you're drawing. So it's not always about just going around something. You know, maybe you're, you're drawing and your, your contour drawing is it's like a, tr a fun trip you take through your painting and you just make sure you're kind of sticking close to all the other information so you can kind of use everything else to kind of see if you're kind of at the right size and shape and things like that as you go. But that's for the most part what the contour drawing is, just starting in one place and keeping the pencil on the paper and then just traveling over the top of your preliminary sketch, your light sketch, with your darker pencil line. I always say this to my students, if you feel that you don't want to do a darker pencil line over your preliminary sketch, that's fine too. I like seeing pencil lines in my watercolor paintings so that you can see them underneath the paint and sometimes it shows through here and there. Uh, I particularly like that. But you might say, you know what, I don't want to see a lot of pencil lines. I'd rather just have the watercolor paint on my paper, and that's fine too. You're the artist. You decide what you look you uh, are interested in creating with your painting, because we're each uh, individually artists that are trying to find our way through uh, the uh, techniques and methods that we use and find out what we like best to see in our finished paintings when we're completed with everything. So those are things you think about as you're going and working, especially here on my channel. Try all my techniques, try all my methods, and then you just see what sticks. Some things you're not going to like, you don't have to do them, obviously. And then the things that you do like that I do, you can keep those in your uh, repertoire and work from there. And there's a lot of other great artists out there too on YouTube. So, you know, hopefully you're checking out other artists too and kind of comparing and you know, looking around for different ideas. I don't have all the ideas or I'm not the world's foremost authority on watercolor painting. Um, you'll probably be watching all kinds of interesting artists out there too at the same time you're watching me um, to get all of your ideas. And then you take and pick and choose from each different artist the things that you like and then you make your own style. That's basically the goal, the ultimate goal. But I think if you're just starting out, it's good to maybe stick with one or two artists possibly so it doesn't get too, um, you know, too much information bombarding you when you're uh, doing watercolor. Well, let's uh, take a quick break again. I'll get my paints ready. I'm going to spritz my um, palette here with a nice spritzer bottle by Holbein. Um, these are great. I, I have buy like two or three of these at a time because they, you know, they break once in a while. You know, I use them so much. But I usually spritz my palette like this just a little bit. And it's ready to go. And that's what's great about these Prang Oval 16 palettes. And these are the palettes I suggest you use if you're just starting out. Prang Oval 16. Um, the only thing is you'd want to arrange the colors like I have them. Warm on this side and then cool colors on this side. And I have a video that tells you all about that. You just type in Chris Petri um, Prang Oval 16 set and you'll see how I set up my palette. I have all kinds of videos on palettes. If you type in Chris Petri palette, you'll probably see a dozen videos on all different types of palettes I have. I have my professional palettes that I use. I have my beginner's palettes I use. So 
take advantage of all my other videos that are on my channel too. I always mention that. I have hundreds of videos on my channel. Go in there, check everything out. The more you watch and hear and learn, the better off. You don't have to paint every video that you see. Just listen and watch and you'll pick up tons of information just by watching and listening. Maybe you scratch down a few notes on some uh, paper, pad, maybe you have a little notebook you keep for yourself for your watercolor art. I hope you'll do that. Uh, you know, some of you have great memories, so you don't need to write anything down. I have to write everything down all the time, constantly. But uh, anyway, let's get back to painting in just a second. Um, I'll just take a quick break, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, start painting. All right, so we're going to paint. We're going to get started painting. Uh, if I didn't mention, the Prang Oval 16 set does come with a great round brush with the um, set for free. So it's in the set. So when you buy the set, you'll have a brand new round brush along with your set, which if you're doing small paintings like this, this is really, it can do a lot of work with your, you're always going to maybe need a little bit of a larger brush possibly. So I always, I use my Simply Simmons number no. nine round brush. It's in a, th these are both synthetic brushes and synthetic brushes are great because synthetic brushes don't hold that much water. So when you're just starting out in watercolors or maybe you've only been painting like a, a half a year or maybe a couple months, your, your advantage is if you can have less water in your brush hairs, better off because you don't want to flood out your paper with all kinds of water dripping everywhere. You want to kind of keep things a little bit less, uh, you know, um, watery, uh, let's say, with your paintings. You know, you want to have more control with your washes. So, and you can't miss these online. Simply Simmons, round brush, synthetic. It's got that pearl, pearl look to it. So that's like a pearl coating on the brush handle. Looks really nice, actually. And um, so you could use both of these brushes, and we will use both of these here in this painting. I'll start out with a larger brush, and maybe we'll use the smaller Prang brush too as we go. So the first thing I'll do is, I have my water off camera, but I'll always kind of just share with you what I do with my water. I just have a glass, you know, a glass here with fresh, clean water, and I change the water frequently all the time. I'm always changing my water. Then I also have a... Uh, piece of small kitchen sponge that I've trimmed down off of a larger sponge. I just cut a little square and then I usually get that, uh, I dip it in some water and get it damp and then I wring out all the water out of it so that it's just a damp, really nice damp piece of sponge like this and I set that down next to my water container and then what I do is I rinse my brush and then I tap on the sponge a little bit to take some of the water off the brush and then I go into my paints and grab my paints and then I mix some paints over here if I need to. Um, usually we like to do that. We like to mix our paints first or get some paint out on our palette first, decide what colors we're going to use. Much easier to do it that way than try to figure it out as you're going. And we'll do that right now. So again, that's just, I wanted to show my quick way I set everything up. I have, I'm going to use, I want more area in my video for the main critical things you're going to need to see, which is the painting, the photograph and the palette. The water container you really, and the sponge, you don't really need to see that, but you'll just know that I'm constantly rinsing my brush, tapping off the water, excess water on the sponge, and then going into my palette and working in that fashion. So we will continue here. I'm going to pour some water into my glass and um, we'll get started. Okay, so. I'm going to look at this and say, what are the predominant colors I'm seeing right here in this, uh, in this painting that I took a picture of online? Sure enough, I can see that pink is the color, the main color here, the pink oh, um, uh, lilies here. So I'm going to go with a touch of red and a touch of the um, lavender color, just to kind of give it an interesting... Let's have some interesting color mixes. Let's not just go with one color, right? Uh, why not? Go with extra, you know, mix some extra interesting colors within your um, washes. So if we're going to paint these beautiful, this beautiful pink lily, um, well, let's do this. Let's get a little bit of the lavender type pink and then our most uh, warm red we have, the, this red here. Let's put that there. And then what you can do is you can kind of figure that these, these are your lighter washes you're going to mix. 
you're getting your colors set up here in your palette first as you look at your photograph or your painting or whatever you're working from. You might be working from a real bouquet of flowers. That's fine. Whatever you're working from, just try to get your colors selections into your palette first. That saves you a lot of time and headaches. Then you say to yourself, okay, what else am I seeing? I'm seeing green. Let's get some green in here. So I'm going to use some of that darker green. Then I rinse off my brush, dry off some of the water. You can also use a tissue to dry off some water off your brush. And there we go. So we have our two greens here. Uh, a cooler green which has more blue and a warmer green which has less blue more yellow in it and then um, let's say we'll use some gold yellow and orange up here so I'll take some yellow and orange like that I see some of that yellow and orange there and then here I see some purple so some purple and some blue So this is how we save ourselves a lot of headaches and time by just taking our colors that we see in this painting and putting them here into the palette first. And then we have everything all here nicely organized so that when we go in and start painting, we're not f worrying about, oh, where's that color? What color? We're not looking around for colors and trying to like look at the painting and sitting scratching our heads. Right away we're saying to ourselves, um, we have everything here that we need so we don't have to worry anymore we have everything here as we need and now we just go here and work from this occasionally you will go in and get straight paint from your palette or you know from your wells from your paint wells here but for the most part you're going to use what's over here first to start off with. let's do that let's start right away I'm going to start doing some blue at the bottom some blue and purple so this is the, we're kind of creating the vase here at the bottom. And you can kind of see I'm going to get some color going there. And tap in some color, a couple of splashes. And then over here. some purple over here and then I see right away green we need some greens and I'll use a little brown in that green too kind of mellows out that green a little bit a little bit of brown there and there we go we have some green in here so right now I'm kind of as you can see I'm painting around the flower petals right now which is fine because the flower petals are basically white and pink very very light and all these darker colors like the vase and the some of the, um, there's uh, some stems and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'll get these in like that quickly. Some stems. Like that. Then I rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of water. And then I'm just going to put some of the pink and red over here too, harmonizing my colors throughout my painting. So I'm just blocking in some color over here. So you can kind of see I'm just starting over here on the left. And I'm a, I'm a right-handed person here. So if you're right-handed, which most of you are, most of you are right-handed, when you're painting in watercolor and you're right-handed, you're going to start on the left side of your painting all the time, for the most part. So this way you can kind of work from the left over this way and you're not leaning with your hand into the paint. So you always want to keep your hand away from that paint. Keep your hand on the paper. This gives you a really good amount of control with your brush. You're using your brush almost like a pencil or a pen. You got your hand on the paper and you're touching down with your washes onto your paper like that. And I think that's going to be good. And then if you're left-handed, no problem. You just, you're going to start on this side of the painting with your hand on the paper. And then you're just going to work like this to the from the right to the left over this way. Okay, so let's get a little bit of color on our There we go. So 
So I'm going to try to get in a light wash here. Start a light wash. And if you find you put too much paint onto one of your petals of your flower, you can always take your tissue, roll it up a little bit, and then blot some paint. You know, that's fine. That's a good technique, actually, to, to kind of learn of rolling up your tissues or your paper towels and, and blotting some paint once in a while. If you have too much water or too much paint on your painting when you're working, you can always do a quick little lift up of some paint. And uh, that's not a problem. So we have some of that. Some of this green is starting to flood into my petal. I don't, so I'm going to take my tissue and just go this way and blot that up like that. Perfect. Okay, now um, more blue and purple over here. Just a little touch of blue and purple here into that green. And then maybe some brown and light green here. Maybe some orange. So sometimes I'll go straight into the palette right here and just infuse in some colors to get a little color change here and there. Okay, now we're going to continue up. Let's get some purple up here. You see how there's some really good purple and blue and some gold and green to kind of shape around this part of the flower petal over here. So let's do that. Let's get some straight, straight uh, paint right out of the palette. Go right into the palette. Don't even bother going over here into the, the uh, mixing wells or the mixing area. Go straight into your paint right here to the purple. Get that really good dark purple right like that. That's where you learn how to use both your straight paints out of your wells of your palette as well as your mixing area. So if you're mixing like we did here, we mixed everything lighter washes of color in here to get all of our colors that we needed for this painting right over here. Then as we're working through the painting and we're seeing there's some really, really rich, beautiful, dark uh, colors, vibrant, um, exciting, dark tonal values in our painting, then we don't need to always go over here. We can go straight into our colors. And that's, you'll learn and memorize your colors as you go. So that's another thing you will find. You will see that you'll rem memorize your colors eventually as you work with your same palette as you go. And then we have here some green, and that's good. And we will get some pink over here and purple. Let's go right up there with some light wash. Now we're using barely any paint, so you can kind of see how we go in here and get that really light wash with barely any paint, just light purple and pink over here, like that. Keep it really light. And then we see some greens. So let's work on some greens and a little bit of brown in there to kind of give it that olivey green. And there's even some yellow in there too. We'll mix in some of that yellow, straight yellow. But let's see here. Yeah, we have some green there and some purple straight into the purple and the green, like that, like this. Then we have some of that gold and orangey color. Let's use that right here. And then we can see some dark, maybe some brown and some red. So maybe I'll mix it right over here. So sometimes you have to kind of be careful, mix your colors carefully. I'll mix some dark brown and red here to kind of give us a really nice dark, kind of a reddish brown there, like that. I'm, just, I'm going to try to just mix what I'm seeing in the painting over here. I do see this is the center of the flower. There's some yellow some kind of that lemony yellow we have like that straight lemon yellow right into the palette and uh, and then within that too we have a little bit of that darker bit of uh, this very very center shadow kind of color 
maybe a little bit of purple in there too, just to get it dark for our, our that exciting feeling of shadow in the center of the flower. There we go, and then we'll keep working around our, we have some more green over here, so I'm kind of just working around the flower petals as you can see. And a little bit over here too. And then we have some of that purple We'll mix it out here a little bit. We'll get a little bit of that darker purple in there. You kind of just tap in, touch the paper just a little bit with your purple and let that mix as it goes along there. Watercolor is super fun and interesting because a lot of times the paint does the work for you. You just kind of let it happen and it uh, tends to look really good. And then we'll have a little bit of a interesting color there that's once in a while you can mix in a little really beautiful color that might not be in the rest of the um, painting that gives it a little bit of a interesting um, glow of color and beauty so just remember that you can harmonize all your colors and use all the repeating colors that you have here to start with but as you work through your painting you could mix one little touch of color that you really like for your favorite kind of color and you can just put it in one little spot of your painting and that'll really kind of sing out and glow and that might be the focal point of your painting and you wouldn't even realize it. But maybe you just realize how beautiful it is yourself because you put it there and you realize, wow, I really do love that greenish blue, like aqua marine color, like a nice, uh, uh, what color is that? Like the, um, Trying to think what colors remind me of that color of the green and the blue. Um, turquoise, that's what I meant to say. Turquoise is a beautiful color. And if you just add one little bit of turquoise color here and nowhere else in the painting, it's really going to look really awesome. So that's what I'm doing here. Trying to make this even more exciting than I can imagine. And then more purple up here up top. So. Again, a lot of this is fun, just having fun with your colors, your paints. You can kind of see we started out with just a really um, simple kind of flower shape with our shorebird. And now the most of it is having a great time getting our washes in with our paint here. And uh, let's keep working. We have... A little bit of shadow there. Then we're going to do some more of that pink. And I have clean, fresh water. Don't forget, I always have, I'm trying to always keep fresh, clean water in my water bucket. So that's how I can get this really beautiful light washes of pink and purple and the colors that we're using, the light, really light washes. Um, we can only do that if we have fresh, clean water. If we're, if we have really muddy looking water and we're not cleaning our water bucket out and dumping our water, then we're going to have a problem getting good washes, those good, really nice looking washes like we have. Okay, so now I will do this. I will get some paint on the paper on these flower petals. Put some splashes on there. And if I have a little bit of an issue with too much paint flowing into my petals of my flower, I'm just going to blot it up. There we go. Blot and keep going. And again, I'm thinking to myself, I want to make sure I do not overdo it with this painting and start doing too much. So that's why I'm really trying to keep this you know, fresh.
fresh, not too much. I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm pretty much finishing up now, actually. I'm not really gonna do a whole lot more here. And then over here, a little more. Okay, so there we have it. We're really having a fun time here. And then there's some, a touch of blue and purple over here. So this area over here is sort of quiet. And uh, we'll, we'll leave it like that. Just a little bit of blue and purple over here. Maybe a little touch of pink splashed in there. Like that. Then we're going to go in and we'll take some orange and yellow and brown and we'll mix our shorebird colors here. So that's our shorebird. Orange, yellow, and a little bit of brown. And that's going to be our shorebird there. And we're going to leave a little bit of a highlight, a highlight around his feathers there. And then down here at the bottom, we're going to go darker, brown, brown and blue like that then I rinse off my brush dry off some of the water off the brush on a tissue and then I'm just gonna do blend in his the bottom of the, the shorebird here I just blend in the color at the bottom. Maybe a little bit of straight and blue and purple at the bottom here. And then his legs here. And then a little bit of blue and purple. We'll do some shadowing here. And some more of the brown and purple for his beak. There we go. He's got his beak there. Beaker, we'll call him Beaker. Beaker the shorebird here. And what else? Do, okay, so we have, we'll put his, we'll do some more details for our bird here. You can always blot up a little bit of paint if you find you've has you have too much too much uh, dark paint on your your like like a, if we're doing a shorebird here and you find you have too much dark paint on there no problem lift up a little bit with your tissue and uh, and that's all and always remember too less is more maybe you know if you think the you're like a something like a shorebird like this if it's not coming out good or you're thinking oh I'm don't keep fussing over it best thing to do is get a little bit of the paint on there and then just let it sit and don't worry about it don't keep touching it up or anything you can always later on you can come back so always remember you have the option of coming back later to um, touch up your shorebird don't keep working on it and working on it to get it perfect let it be as it is a little bit of purple, a little more purple here at the bottom of the painting here. A little bit of pink, just a little bit of wash on the bottom here.
All right, we have had fun. We've practiced our brush skills, our wash skills here, mixing paints. We've practiced how to get some really good, um, strong colors here, darks, as well as really, really light washes. Um, and again, mixes of colors, keeping them nice and fresh, clean colors right in our palette here, all lined up before we even started. So this is the kind of thing we'll continue to do on my channel. So if you stick with me here on my channel, these are the fun things that we're going to work on. And um, you'll see that that we are always concerned about repetition, doing things over and over again so that we make sure we are practicing the fundamentals of watercolor, the methods and techniques you'll need to really master and learn um, as you go so that you'll have good habits and everything will just come naturally and your paintings will always consistently get better and better. All right, so until the next time we get together and paint, I wish everybody um, happy painting and enjoy the journey of watercolor. It's fun. It's just constantly working on the fundamentals of watercolor and um, having a fun time with it. These are great small compositions. If you can do a lot of small compositions, that's probably preferable than trying larger paintings in the beginning, especially if you're just one or two years into painting in watercolor. A great way to kind of do things is just focus in on some, really zoom in on some uh, subject matter, like a, a, like a flower, a bird, a bi anything you can think of, anything you like to paint, a boat, uh, you know, any, any a building, any kind of interesting information you want to, you focus in on just a, a small section of it and you start just using the fundamental practice, um, uh, you know, um, methods that will, you know, get you to get the result you want for your painting. So here again, we wanted to get the beautiful dark and lights, the darks and the lights in this painting. So light washes and dark washes mixed together to get this composition completed. And that's really what we were looking to do. And to make sure that we had a good plan going in, mixing our colors first, figuring out what colors are in this. Okay, we put them onto the palette. Then the next thing was, let's start getting in here and doing the painting and then saying to ourselves, well, if we want to get really dark washes in here, we can go straight into the colors. And we don't even have to go in here. We can just go straight into the palette, grab some darker washes here and there and paint get those onto the paper and then you'll see that you really will have a lot of benefit kind of using your palette in that way of kind of having the idea of lights and darks all the time and how can you get those darks and lights and you know to get your darkest darks you'll need straight paint right out of the uh, palette and then over here on your mixing areas those are your lighter washes you can mix out your uh, lighter washes and of course you're going to use this to get started and get your colors out onto your palette when you're figuring out what colors you, are you going to need for your painting. So um, thanks again for coming by. Um, we'll see you on our next uh, tutorial, which is going to be before you know it um, very, very soon. And uh, again, thanks for uh, coming by and uh, painting with me. We'll see you soon.